It's a bit different this morning. I'm not wrapped up on the allotment. I'm actually in Central Park and in Strawberry Fields. I'm just having a walk around. So I'll share with you some of the views. Unfortunately, the apartment beyond me, I don't know if you can see it, covered in builders, scream, is uh, the former arm of uh, John Lennon, but there's restoration work going on, so he ain't got much of it. However, we'll have a look around the park and the area which was dedicated by Yoko for John. I'm in our old square now, just behind me is Macy's, it's got a flower show coming on. But there's a little park here and I just want to show you the floral display what's on, it's fantastic. Well, we've safely returned from across the pond. I enjoyed that. It's something of a change, and I thought I'd pop it, tag it onto the video. Anyway, it's a bit raining. Last night we had quite a lot. The ground's still wet, and the stuff, lots of stuff will need to get planted out. It's amazing how, in the wake up in a way, the stuff has grown very fast. I'd just like to thank, personally, Jamie for as you know, he looked after some uh, crimson crush tomatoes. I just pricked them out into pots. I couldn't afford to leave them just in the greenhouse, and he kindly took them home, put them under the grow lights, and they've shot up quite a lot. <laughs> anyway, I'll just show you what's happening in the greenhouse because stuff has moved on quite a lot in here. The stuff in here has shot up amazingly. Another thanks, shout out goes to Andy Fowler, who's did a good job keeping the plants hydrated well up in a way. As you can see, everything's shot up quite well. Them shallots there, them screaming to get out, but I've just checked the soil, it's still absolutely sodden, and also the broad beans. Another little surprise I had yesterday, fellow plot elder kindly bought me a tray up of Kelsey onions. <laughs> so, uh, I had them with welcome, open arms, then we'll be going out as and when I can. 
In the meantime, I've got uh, three packets of lark sweet corn. I don't know who's in each, but I'm going to fill this tray of uh, root trainers. There's 50 cells in there. I usually put about 36 six by six block, but I'll sow the lot and pick the best plants out in the meantime. Another thing what happened while I was away, as you notice, the potatoes have uh, made an appearance. Unfortunately, I've got this uh, board across the top, which I was using as a table, and they popped their heads up at the board and started going horizontal. However, after just a day or so into the daylight, they seem to be greening up better and reaching for the sky, so them should be okay. Just take a look at this Japanese maple. It's in fantastic shape at the moment, and I, really I don't want it to be this forward, because it's been in the greenhouse, it's warmed up, it's in lovely leaf. The red one's not so far advanced, but that's looking good as well. We've just taken the cover off what what will be one of my onion beds, and uh, apart from a, a stray, whatever it is growing there, I just want to show you the the worms we've got in here. It's absolutely loaded with red wrigglers. So uh, I think the onions should do nice and well in that one. I've given the soil a little tit lava with the five prong cultivator and it's fluffed up quite nicely. It's still a bit on the damp side but I think I'm going to try and get the shallots in now. There's 24 sets that have uh, fired up so I'll be doing two rows of 12. I've lined them out there, it's roughly six inch spacing. Looking on the Thompson & Morgan website it says four to six inches, which I, seen, I thought was a bit close, however I bow to that experience, so I'll do them at six. And that luckily fits twelve in a row. And I'll be adding a drop of this to the roots as I put them in, mycorrhizal fungi, and see if that makes any difference. As you can see from here, these are way past going out time, they should have been out a long while ago, but I'm sure they'll forgive me once I get into that lovely soil. That's uh, two rows of twelve I've planted out, and I've just put a couple of the screens in the back and front, I'll pop a bit of glass behind, just give them a bit of protection to get them going. During the course of the day, the weather did pick up and uh, we actually had a bit of sunshine. So I managed to get in my uh, soil palmera. There's six per row and I got four rows in. So all I've got to do now is cover that up with the black polythene and I'll leave that covered until we'll get the first showings. The sun keeps making a little cameo appearance now and again, so it's a chance to do a bit of al fresco sowing. So I'm going to start off and get the sweet corn in the root trainers. This is a 50 cell root trainer. Normally I use the 32 cell which is 8 books of 4. However these, I've picked these new ones up, there's 5 in a row and I can get 10 in the frame. I've put the sweet corn into soak. The variety is lark and so I'll be, I've made the owls in and I'll be popping those in now. Pasta's just arrived with my asparagus plants. Now these were due to be dispatched at the beginning of the month, but because I knew I'd be away, I'll give uh, the company, company Pomona Fruits, a call 
We got my order up and I told them to dispatch them a week later and surely they did so they've arrived. I need to get the bed ready first because it's got a lot of manure on but we'll have a look at these. That there is 12 crowns and the variety is called Pacific 2000. This is the asparagus bed. It's already been prepared but uh, in the interim period while I was waiting and with the delivery of the horse manure I've just thrown that on top and with the rain we've had it's washed the nutrients and whatever into the manure into the soil. So now I'll just remove that skimming off the top and get the trenches prepared to put the crowns in. So that's most of the stuff took off the top now. There's only just a few scrapings left on. So what I propose to do is just dig the top half completely and just turn it into what the soil what's left there. Okay, that's the top lot we turned over. I've ordered uh, 12 crowns, so I'll put uh, six in each row. Next thing to do, I've got to drink two trenches, about a foot wide and about nine inches deep. That's 20 centimetres wide and 15 centimetres deep and uh, what I do then is put a ridge on and place the crown each side of the ridge you can put uh, compost and that in the bottom when you're well rotted and that so that's the next thing the main thing with the asparagus beds is to keep any perennial weeds out because they, they don't like the roofs disturbed so that's the next job Right, because the restrictions on where I can put the spoils out of the trench, I'm, I'm going to have to do them one at a time. So make it easier for me filming actually. So next thing I'll do, I'll go ridge in the bottom of a bit of rotted manure and soil. Then I'll start spreading the crowns over the top. Crowns will be spread around about 15, 18 inches apart. That's what the RHS recommend on their site. And that just works out enough to get six in each row. Right on cue and as if by magic we had the sun shower. However, it seemed to work out quite well because when I've formed the ridge it stopped the soil from falling back down. It's actually bind the soil a bit together so it's worked out. That's the ridge done anyway now so all I've got to do now is put the first six crowns across there. I'll put a bit more rotted manure on top of them with the soil and then bed them in, just keep the tip just around the soil or just slightly below the level. These really are nice plants and if you look you can see the buds already in there. So I'm just going to sort six out and we'll get them in. So that's the first six on the ridge and we'll just cover them up now with a nice bit of topsoil.
in between the chairs I've finally managed to get this row in and covered. What I've done, I've marked the line of the row with the usual yellow tape on both ends. And then where the actual crowns are, I've marked the line with a mark, considering these will be in for a good while. I may even put saw cuts in the boards, or um, the tape on, depends. Still one more row to go, but I think that'll be tomorrow now. The light's starting to fall and it's starting to rain again. No need to film it, you've seen it once, so uh, I'll be back when the bed's completely finished. Well, I've out for most of the day and the rain I stopped at all. The original plan was to put the other row of asparagus in, then I've got to take the covers off the peas and put the support netting off, but I don't think that's going to happen today. So instead of hanging on and hanging on, I'll wrap this one up and I'll probably add that on to the next start of the next video. So until then, I'll see you all later. Bye for now.